Howdy Pops, it's me again, your chief Edulancy. This is a continuation discussion from part 1, the basics of drop survey, best practices. What's part 1 to have a better overview by clicking the link in the upper corner as shown. Before we begin, this segment is sponsored by Polaris Center. For more details, check in post in the description area. Polaris Center. Enroll and see for yourself. Let's begin. Part 2 segment contains the procedures and calculation processes. This includes formula, including abbreviated signs, letter, and symbols. Note, abbreviation may differ in some shape, but generally it has the same usage and approach. <laughs> Note, again, the abbreviation may not be exactly written in other forms and procedures. However, the method is basically standard and likewise used in any draft survey. So, to continue with, steps and procedures as follows. Part 1, we had the draft reading completed and of course we have to take this density uh, sampling, which was uh, shown in Part 1 how to do a draft uh, reading survey. 2. Testing and determining the density, whether it's on seawater or the water, is quite important. And in most cases, we take uh, different depths of uh, water and each side of the vessel just to make sure and get the average of these densities. Because there are cases that the densities that you might get on the shallow part of the water is different when you go a little bit deeper, wherein the vessel is submerged. So we take the average of such. And three, soundings of ballast water, fuel oil, fresh water, is commonly termed as deductibles. Of course, an accurate measurement has to be taken and must be taken within the time frame of survey. And so, based on part one discussion, essential equipments were laid out in addition, and most importantly, this hydrostatic table has to be provided upon the start of calculations. Let's do the calculation demo, sample only, not based on drop readings in part one. Here are the list of the following data gathered. These are the six points drop readings as follows. Number one, observe drop, forward, Port equals to 7.6 meters. Number two, observe draft. And number six, observe draft up starboard equals to 8.2 meters. List down all this in your notes and we will proceed with the calculation. And here are the remaining values that are required to complete the or proceed to the computation. Number seven, eight, and nine are drop marks forward, midship, and up to their perpendiculars, which is uh, equals to. As you can see here, 1.5 on negative, uh, 1.5 again, negative, and 2.0 positive. Uh, you'll find here the rules of the thumb that has to be followed. And number 10, LBP, or length between perpendiculars, equals to 223 meters. Number 11 is length between uh, marks, or length between drops, equals to 2 to 1.5 meters. So, after gathering all the data required, we can now proceed with the computation. And step 1. Computing the mean drops for forward, mid, chip, and aft. The formulas go like this. Forward mean is equals to forward drop port side and add it to forward drop starboard side divided by 2. You will do the same thing for mid mean and aft mean. And hence, you'll get the answer. For forward mean, you'll get 7.25 meters. For mid mean, you'll get 7.635 meters. And for aft mean, you'll get 8.25 meters. Step 2, we'll have the apparent trim. The formula is mean drop, aft. Subtract mean draft forward. So mean draft up is 8.25 meters, which is subtracted by 7.55 meters, which is the forward mean. And the answer is 0.7 meters. Let's proceed to step 3, computing the perpendicular corrections for forward, mid, and up. The formula is the perpendicular correction for forward, mid, and up is the correction or DMF, DMM, and DMA multiplied for each by the apparent trim over length between marks or length between drops. 
in this example we have 1.5 and 1.5 also for the mid correction and the up correction is 2.0 multiplied by 0 0.7 over 2 to 1.5 we have now the answer for the perpendicular correction forward which is 0 0.0047 mid is 0 0.0047 as well and then half is 0 0.0063 now we apply the rule of the thumb which is if trimmed by the stern then forward correction is subtracted the mid ship also will follow the procedure on the forward and whilst the half will be added while if trimmed by the head then the rule is the opposite way the forward is added same thing it follows the forward for the midship it is also added and the half correction is subtracted so in this scenario we are subtracting the forward from the min drop which is 7.55 minus 0, 0, 0.047 or 0 0.0047 and on the midship 7.635 which is 0 0.0047 and half is 8.25 which is plus 0 0.0063 we have now a corrected draft, or we can also term it as true draft for forward, mid, and up, which is 7.5453, and then 7.6303, and 8.2563. So take this down and include it in your notes. Continuing on, step four, how to get true trim. True trim equals to true observed draft, half corrected, minus true observed draft forward corrected, which is equals to 8.2563, meters minus 7.5453 meters equals to 0 0.711 meters in this example and step 5 getting the mean drop equals to mean forward and up drop equals to true observed drop forward corrected plus true observed drop up corrected divided by 2 so 7.5453 plus 8.52563 divided by 2 is 7.9008 and we have that mean forward and up drop Let's continue. Step 6, how to get mean of mean. Mean of mean equals to mean drop plus corrected midship drop divided by 2 equals to 7.9008 plus 7.6303 divided by 2 equals to 7.7656. Then on step 7, how to get is quarter mean. Quarter mean equals to mean of mean plus corrected midship drop divided by 2 equals to 7.7656 plus 7.6303 divided by 2 equals to 7.6979. So mean of mean equals to 7.7656, while quarter mean equals to 7.6979. Take note that you will notice here that I am using four decimal places. So it's up to you. You can utilize five or more. The difference is negligible. Step 8. Get the exact displacement equivalent to quarter mean. Method 1. Using the hydrostatic table, find the equivalent of quarter mean using two decimal places. Example from previous computation, we had quarter mean equals to 7.6979. Hence, with two decimal places, quarter mean equals to 7.69. From hydrostatic QM, 7.69 equals to 2.961.7 tons. LCF equals to 87.282. And TPC equals to 41.4. Hence, A, get the QM remainder equivalent. QM equals to 7.6979 minus 7.69. That is with the two decimal places. Equals to 0 0.0079 times 100. Equals to 0 0.79. B, 0 0.79. Multiplied by the TPC of 41.4 equals to 32.706 metric ton. Quarter mean 7.6979 displacement is now equivalent to 2.9621.7 plus the Q quarter mean remainder 32.706 equals to 2.9654.406. As we continue, uh, take notes and verify the computations. Alright, method 2 is uh, recommended by applying interpolation from the hydrostatic tables. Procedure A. Get the closest lesser and greater available value for 7.6979 based from the hydrostatic tables. We'll find 7.69 equals to 2.9621.7. 2 is the missing value. And 3, 7.7 .7 displacement is 2.9663.1. And using interpolation formula, this is how it goes 7.69 equals 2.9621.7. 7.6979 is the missing value and 7.7 .7 equals to 2963.1 hence using multiplication or cross multiplication we'll find that x is equals to 41.4 times 0079 over 0 0.01 the answer will be 30.706 and hereby we'll find the same answer now i'm using this kind of uh, interpolation and uh, 
most recommended because if you'll go to the hydrostatic table as shown here, you'll find here in this uh, another set of hydrostatic table. Uh, not, it's not the one that used in the previous demo. So you'll find here that 7.65 has a 110.4 TPC and 7.7 .7 is 110.5. So if you're looking for 7.6979, then if you use 110.4 as your uh, multiplier then you will have a different value so that means to say you have to uh, interpolate as well your tpc so that's why uh, interpolation is better so that if in case the tpc is not the same to the next value then it will be more accurate but if the tpc are the same for the next value and you're looking for x then you will arrive at the same uh, values if you are using method one and who needs brain if you got battery so let's find out with this interpolator 7.69 and the missing x is 7.6979 while uh, the next value is 7.7 .7. and in fine here uh, 2.9621.7 is the equivalent and the 7.7 .7 equivalent displacement is 2.9663.1 and there you go the answer is 2965406. So it's the same. To continue, step 9, computing for the trim correction A and B. Formula, trim correction A equals to true trim, close and open parenthesis LBP, divided by 2, subtracted by LCF, multiplied by TBC times 100, divided by LBP. You will find here on the inset video, upper right corner, the LCF is 87.282. So now we can proceed with 0.711 times 221.5 divided by 2 minus LCF, which is 87.282, multiplied by 41.4, multiplied by 100, divided by 221.5, we have trim correction A, 311.869 metric tons. Now let's compute for trim correction B or second trim correction. The formula is true trim multiplied by itself to the second power, multiplied by 50, and multiplied by MTC difference. MTC difference, as shown here, is taken by using quarter mean, which is 7.69 in our example, subtract 0 0.5, which is a constant, and then do the same by adding 0 0.5, you'll get 7.19 and 8.19. And as per hydrostatic table above, you'll find there that 7.19 is equivalent to 429.2 and 8.19 is 454.3 MTC. You'll get the difference is 25.1. And so 0 0.7111 to the second power times 50 times 25.1 divided by 221.5 equals to 2.864 metric tons. Finally, let's apply first and second trim correction. Displacement corrected was 2965.406. Trim correction A is 311.869. And as per rules to follow, if trim by the stern, follow LCF sign, and trim by the head, reverse LCF sign. Trim correction B is always added. So 2965.406 plus 311.869 plus 2.864. Our displacement corrected for trim is 2969.139 metric tons. This displacement is also called even keel displacement. Step 10. Density correction. Then we apply to displacement corrected trim. Density correction formula equals to displacement times 1.025 minus observed density divided by 1.025. 2.9969.139 times 1.025 minus 1.027, which is the actual density, divided by 1.025 equals to 58.47 metric tons. Note. If actual density is greater than 1.025, then density correction is added. Whilst if density is lesser than 1.025, then density correction is subtracted. Thus, corrected displacement for trim equals to 2969.139 metric tons plus 58.47 metric tons. We have now the displacement corrected for density equals to 3027.609 metric tons. And we're almost done. Step 11, get the dead weight, subtract from displacement, corrected trim and density. Procedure displacement corrected to density equals to 3007.609 metric tons. Light shape is 12352 metric tons. Subtracted from 
3002.609 equals to 1765.609 metric tons. This is your dead weight. And finally, we have step 12, apply known weights. So we have the dead weight of 1765.609 subtracted with 7750. So we have a constant or cargo of 9925.609 metric tons. Take note, if you are doing an initial survey and in balanced condition, then the result or value is, we call it as actual constant of the ship. And if you are doing a final survey, and if you take the difference, then what you get is the constant and at the same time, the total cargo loaded. So of course, uh, you can also have an intermediate survey with uh, such. So to finalize it, uh, we have a recapitulation and validation. And here, uh, you'll be able to see that uh, it is uh, presented in a... Uh, tabulated forms so as you can see here the values are exactly the same so they are computed uh, the same as what we did with the manual computation so uh, it's okay now uh, when it comes to the displacement it's also exactly the same and also with lcf and dpc but when it comes to the mtc as you can uh, notice here it's using four decimal places while in our case we utilize uh, 7.19 and 8.19 only so you'll be having uh, difference with regards to the MTC. So with that, you'll have a different answer. So in here, you can see that the constant is 9920.732. While in our uh, manual computation, we have 9925 something. So there's a five ton difference. Of course, this is only a demonstration, but this can be adjusted. It's just the software that I'm using. So uh, it can be rectified. In here, you can, of course, uh, check it with the uh, printout for the reports of your initial survey. And you'll be able to see here of course the results so if you are using as well uh, so-called um, or having a final draft uh, or a final survey and of course you input again uh, different values and then you will have the initial report as well and here you'll be able to see in parallel the reports for your initial and final reports and there if you subtract the difference you'll be able to see the amount or value that has been loaded so there you go. If you have any questions, uh, just post a comment and I'll try to answer them the best way uh, possible that I can. Thank you.